Good morning, America. The secret recording revealed. ABC News obtains that conversation between candidate Donald Trump and Michael Cohen. They were getting old. No, 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 no. I got no, no, no. Talking about payment for a Playboy model story about her affair with Trump. Now Michael Cohen's lawyer is here live only on GMA this morning. Triple threat, fires, dangerous heat, and flooding hitting the coast. Water rescues in North Carolina overnight, a sinkhole swallowing this car. And out west, Yosemite shut down as fast-spreading wildfires close in. Rush to the hospital. Singer Demi Lovato recovering from a suspected drug overdose this morning. The new video of a performance just days before, where she forgot the words to her song about relapsing. I forgot the words. Now the latest on her condition as support pours in for the star. I got bills. Breaking overnight, who's the lucky winner? Just one ticket taking home that giant $522 million jackpot. And more than 3 million others waking up winners. Are you one of the luckiest people in America this morning? Live in Times Square, this is GMA with Robin Roberts, George Stephanopoulos, and Michael Strahan. Someone doesn't have to worry about those bills this morning, winning that big jackpot. Good morning, America. Great to have you with us on this Wednesday morning. And as we said, there are more than one lucky winners this morning. Unfortunately, it doesn't appear to be any of us. No. <laughs> because here we are. But let's show you. Take a look at the screen. Go dust off that ticket that maybe you have hiding under a mattress or in a box somewhere at home. Those are the winning numbers of that massive Mega Millions jackpot. We will tell you where the ticket was sold and how maybe uh, you might be one of the more than 3 million other winners coming up. If you are, you probably no. You probably <laughs> we know by now. Yeah. We're going to begin with that explosive tape, that explosive recording of Donald Trump speaking with his attorney, Michael Cohen, about buying the rights to the story of a Playboy model who claimed to have had an affair with Trump. This all happened just weeks before the 2016 election. And Cohen's attorney is standing by to talk live to George in just a moment. But first, our chief justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas, starts us off. Good morning, Pierre. Robin, good morning. A war of words between Donald Trump and his former attorney is heating up with the release of the tape conversation between the two that we're hearing for the very first time. Great poll, by the way. Seen it. Great poll. Making progress. Big time. You're hearing something highly unusual a private conversation between an attorney and his client. In this case, then candidate Donald Trump in September of 2016, speaking with the fixer, his personal attorney, Michael Cohen who is secretly recording the conversation. Donald Trump, apparently completely unaware he's being taped, asking for refreshments. Give me your coat, please. They don't have a legitimate purpose. So. And now a critical part of the tape that's in dispute. Cohen's purchase of a story from former Playboy model Karen McDougal, who claims she had an affair with Trump. I need to open up a company for the transfer of all of that info regarding our friend David. David, according to sources, is apparently Trump's friend David Pecker, CEO of America Media Incorporated, which owns the National Enquirer. American Media paid $150,000 for McDougal's story, but killed it before the election. Cohen and Trump then discussed setting up a shell company to buy the rights to the Enquirer's McDougal story and perhaps others. I Give spoke it to me when it comes time for the financing, which will be. Listen, what financing? We'll have to pay you. So I'll pay for cash. No, 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 no. I got no, no, no. Cohen's attorney suggests that Trump's mentioning of cash is indicative of someone planning to engage in illegal activity. But Trump attorney Rudy Giuliani suggesting last night that Trump was doing everything by the book, that there's nothing illegal about the conversation, that he wanted any transaction to be handled by check, which can be documented. Giuliani also calling into Fox News. We listened to it numerous, numerous times, and the transcript makes it quite clear at the end that President Trump says, quote, don't pay with cash. The emerging feud between Trump's legal team and Michael Cohen, who used to be part of Trump's innermost circle, is now fully engaged. For the record, Giuliani says Trump never paid any money to buy and control the Playmates, Playmates story. George. Pierre Thomas, thank you. We're joined now by Michael Cohen's attorney, Lanny Davis. Welcome, Lanny. Good to see you again. Uh, you've been working for Michael Cohen for weeks, haven't spoken out on television. Why release the tape now? Why come here? After a year and a half and recently an intense campaign of disparagement and lies and smears against Michael Cohen from the Trump camp, primarily by 
Mayor Giuliani, inventing words in a transcript that didn't ever get spoken, as you just heard. The word is cash. Everybody should listen to the tape and see whether I'm right or not. Just listen. I, I, I do want to get to that, but wh how do you respond to Mr. Giuliani's claim that it's outrageous that, that a lawyer was taping his client? Well, it changes the topic. Why did Giuliani lie about Michael Cohen, saying that he's the one who said cash, just as he lied when he said that Donald Trump, in fact, didn't say... It may be changing the topic, but what, what's the answer? Why was uh, well, he taped? Well, uh, Michael Cohen has an answer to why he taped conversations, and I think he'll have to give that answer himself. I can't reveal that, but I will say that Michael Cohen has turned a corner in his life and he's now dedicated to telling the truth to everyone, and we'll see what happens. Let, let's get into some of the specifics right there. You say he said cash. That's, that seemed to be what I heard as well, but it is, it is a little bit garbled. Rudy Giuliani says that he was saying don't pay cash. What if it was cash? What's the significance there? It's about lies and truth. Giuliani can't make up the words don't pay. I say to everybody who voted for Donald Trump, don't believe me, I'm a Democrat. Listen to the tape. The words don't pay are not heard the word cash. So it's not about cash versus not cash. It's about truth. And the power of the truth is what Michael Cohn now has, no matter what Giuliani invents or Mayor Giuliani invents for a president who's been known to lie. Don't believe me. Listen to the tape the way John Dean had a tape that did in Richard Nixon. You say John Dean had a tape that did in Richard Nixon. Those are the Watergate tapes. But this deal wasn't consummated. So is there any criminal activity there? No. It's about truth. So if Mr. Trump lied about would versus would not and what he said to Putin, he lied about denying that the, he knew anything about the McDougal issue when we know from the tape that he did know. He lied almost about everything, including the message as to what happened in the Trump Tower meeting, which Giuliani ultimately had to admit. This is about truth versus lying, and ultimately Donald Trump is going to be done in by the truth. I, I want to play another portion of the tape that I think has some significance that hasn't been focused on yet. Let's listen to this is the tape of Michael Cohen speaking with Donald Trump. I need to open up a company for the transfer of all of that info regarding our friend David. I, w I was struck by the phrase, all of that info. I mean, we know that David Pecker, AMI, had paid for Karen McDougal's story, but Michael Cohen there is talking about all of that info. So is that information beyond Karen McDougal? So I don't know the answer to that other than what I've heard from Mr. Cohen is under a privilege as an attorney, but I will say that it completely disputes the lie that Donald Trump didn't know about Carol McDougal before this conversation. Listen to the tape. He didn't say, what are you talking about? He knew exactly what Cohen was talking about. And two months later, right before the election, his press spokesman denied that he knew anything about Karen McDougal. If you're a Trump voter, you know what a lie is. You don't have to believe me, I repeat. Listen to the tape. But, but you're not denying that this could be about things beyond Karen McDougal. There were things they were worried about that they wanted to take back, and that was what the conversation was about. You heard Mr. Trump say, yes, we don't know what will happen to this other information, but we know that Trump used the word cash, and people who use cash, Rudy Giuliani knows when he's U.S. attorney, are either drug dealers or mobsters. Michael and that's the word cash. Michael Avenatti has also spoken out. Stormy Daniels' attorney want to put up his tweet. Mr. Davis is a good lawyer, but his client, Mr. Cohen, is not innocent, nor is he a victim. Co-conspirator, dishonest thug, continues to refuse to come clean. They are playing you and aiming for a pardon. Where is the rest of the evidence and tapes? Two key things there. Is Mr. Cohen still seeking a pardon from Donald Trump? No. And Mr. Avenatti's in litigation. People in litigation say things about one another, then they settle and everything is fine. So I won't comment on Mr. Avenatti. Thank you for saying something nice about me. But what he's saying about Mr. Cohen is not true, but it's part of a litigation attack, and that happens between lawyers. And there are more tapes of Donald Trump? Uh, there are certainly more tapes that Mr. Cohen has discussed that he normally did in order to take notes. He used his telephone. Beyond that, I'm not uh, going to comment. Lanny Davis, thanks very much. Thank Cecilia? You. Okay, George, thanks. We want to turn to President Trump this morning, also facing major fallout from his tariffs. His administration now announcing a $12 billion bailout for farmers caught in the middle, but the backlash fierce, including from Republicans. ABC's Terry Moran is at the White House with the very latest on this on Terry. Even the president's allies say it seems that in this trade war, it might only be getting worse.
That's right. Uh, the president says, be patient. Good morning, Cecilia. Free trade used to be a bedrock principle for Republicans, but Donald Trump has been a protectionist for decades. Now he's president. He's getting to put his protectionist tariffs in place and getting stiff blowback, especially from American farmers. A showdown over trade at the White House today as the president sits down to negotiate with the European Union. Making tremendous progress. They're all coming. They don't want to have those tariffs put on them. They're all coming to see us. And all this comes as the president tweets, tariffs are the greatest, but not so great for American farmers who've been caught in between the warring sides, hit with retaliatory tariffs from trading partners like Europe and China. The penalties on soybeans, dairy and pork are costing farmers billions. We are directly the people that's being most affected. It, it is out of our pockets that these millions and millions of dollars will flow. President Trump is now trying to blunt this self-inflicted wound, authorizing a $12 billion emergency aid package to bail out the nation's farmers. The payouts beginning in September, just before the midterm elections. But some members of the president's own party have immediately rejected the president's bailout. Here are farmers uh, who just want to make a living. They're in our office. They won't trade, not a. Senator Ben Sass from Nebraska, a farm state, tweeted, This trade war is cutting the legs out from under farmers, and White House's plan is to spend $12 billion on gold crutches. But the president insists his policies are going to benefit farmers, especially in key states that help deliver him to the White House. The farmers will be the biggest beneficiary. Watch. We're opening up markets. You watch what's going to happen. Just be a little patient. So today, when the president meets with the head of the European Union, the subject will be the next trade war over imported automobiles. The consumer could be in the crossfire in this one. The National Automobile Dealers Association predicting that the cost of a domestic car could go up almost $3,000, an imported car almost $7,000. Robin? All right, Terry, thank you. Now to that severe summer weather, take a look at the map. This morning, 20% of the country is facing either excessive heat or dangerous flooding. As temperatures soar into the triple digits out west, torrential rain here in the east. ABC's David Curley has the latest. This morning, it is the triple threat, flooding, fires, and heat. The roads continuing to buckle from the pummeling rain. In Colorado, the moment is caught as a car oh falls into God, a sinkhole, dude. crashing 15 feet onto a drain pipe and new images of the mudslides there, triggered by two inches of rainfall in just 20 minutes. And here in the Baltimore area, floodwaters continue to tear through the streets. It's the wettest July in Baltimore's history, and with another inch or two coming, there's a worry about the strain it's putting on these flood channels. Two adults and a student had to be rescued by firefighters after becoming stranded on this school bus by the floodwaters. In North Carolina, five people rescued after the floodwaters there surrounded their workplace. And in the west, it is the heat and fires. As Yosemite National Park closing down during peak tourist season because of the fast spreading fires. More than 3,000 structures in jeopardy. Strictly for visitor safety, we have to close the road. Evacuees are being told get out while they still can. Now, this is the scene of one of those water rescues, this minivan overnight. Thought it could get through the deep waters. It didn't make it. Tow truck has just arrived to get it out of here. The road's just been reopened. But look behind me. You can see how much water is here. Nearly 14 inches in parts of Maryland, George. It's raining right now. Another day of rain on the forecast, which is why the flood watches remain in effect. Just a soaking. Okay, David, thanks very much. We're going to move on now to the latest on the deadly Trader Joe's standoff. Newly released footage shows the high-speed chase and gun battle that ended with a store employee dead. Police now say she was killed in the crossfire by a police bullet. ABC's Kana Whitworth has the story. This morning, just released police video showing the dramatic chase leading to that deadly confrontation at a Los Angeles Trader Joe's. The suspect, Gene Atkins, seen allegedly shooting at these officers through the back window of his vehicle. Gunfire erupting as he runs out of the crashed car, firing at officers. The officers returning fire, yelling at bystanders to take cover as they run behind a cement wall. Hey, get away! Get away! 
Now, the LAPD revealing that the store manager, Melly Corrado, was accidentally shot and killed by a bullet fired from one of the officer's guns as she ran to the front of the store. Like not even three seconds later, she's running in, running back in the store with her hands up. Just, just uh, run, run, run. And she just collapsed. And that's when the gunman turned around and told one of the employees, pick her up and take her outside but don't come back. I just remind you as you watch this of the tragedy that unfolded in those moments and ask that you place yourself in these two young officers' positions and ask yourself what you would have done. Atkins appearing in court Tuesday charged with over 30 counts, including one count of murder and six counts of attempted murder. He is being held on $18.7 million bail. The suspect's family saying he has a history of mental illness. We just never expected anything like this to happen. And if I would have seen any signs before, I would have definitely got him evaluated and this situation, you know, could have been avoided. He did not enter a plea in court yesterday, but will make another appearance next month. Trader Joe's telling ABC News the store here in Silver Lake will remain closed until further notice. George. Okay, Kenna, thanks very much. Cecilia. Okay, George. Now to Ivanka Trump. The first daughter is shutting down her namesake fashion brand, saying she will focus on her work in Washington. ABC's chief business correspondent, Rebecca Jarvis, is here. And Rebecca, it seems she may have paid the price because of politics. Yeah, that's right, Cecilia. The brand had become a lightning rod for controversy. A number of retailers including Nordstrom, had stopped selling the product over the last 18 months, and sales were falling. 17 months after walking away from her eponymous lifestyle brand, famous for its moderately priced shoes, handbags, clothing, and more. We have everything from coats to beautiful weekends to incredible knits that have been so popular. Ivanka Trump announcing Tuesday the company is officially shutting down. Writing in a statement, I do not know when or if I will ever return to the business, but I do know that my focus for the foreseeable future will be the work I am doing here in Washington. Sources telling ABC News the first daughter had been considering shuttering the brand for some time. Possible conflicts of interest with her work in the White House preventing the company from growing. According to independent online sale tracker Rakuten Intelligence, sales of Ivanka Trump branded merchandise dropped about 55% over the past year. When you look at the trend of Ivanka sales, it looks like a political Rorschach chart um, that just tracks the strength of people's feelings both for and against Donald Trump. The company says it is honoring commitments to partners who will continue to produce and sell product through the end of licensing agreements. Ivanka Trump branded products will be sold at Lord & Taylor, Dillard's, Bloomingdale's, Zappos, and Amazon, among others, until that time is up on those licensing agreements. I wasn't really surprised to see this one happen, given how, how poorly these were doing in sales. But yeah, thanks, Rebecca. Okay. We're going to go now to Ginger, the Georgia Aquarium in Atlanta, where that flooding in the East, Ginger. Yes, that flooding in the east, obviously a great forecast for a shark dive later, but you all and me trying to get back to New York City today, it's going to be tough because we've got that flash flood potential, the tropical moisture squeezing against that cold front, another two to even five inches of rain in the next 24 hours. That's why you have a flash flood watch from South Carolina and North Carolina there up through western New York. There was almost 14 inches of rain in Maryland alone, guys. High risk for flooding, especially west of Scranton. All that brought to you by Rainy Cities and Sensodyne Pro Enamel Toothpaste. We all want white teeth. You know, Doc, how can I get whiter, brighter teeth? And the dentist really has to say, let's take a step back and talk about protecting your enamel. It's important to look after your enamel because it's the foundation for white teeth. I believe dentists will recommend Pro Enamel Strong and Bright because it's twofold. It strengthens your enamel, but then also it polishes away stains for whiter teeth. So it's really something that's a win-win for both the patient and the dentist. Today is day five of the rain train. Very humid, very tropical. 82, we could have some flooding rains, especially this afternoon and this evening. Our pattern changes tonight down to 72. Cloudy tomorrow, more sunshine and mostly dry. 88, still high humidity. Only a stray storm Friday and only isolated storm chances heading into the weekend. It will be pretty hot and humid. More likely chances for showers and storms heading into early next week. Don't leave home, guys, without the umbrella.
Coming up here on GMA, we'll have the latest on Demi Lovato, the superstar singer hospitalized after a suspected drug overdose, now surrounded by her family, her condition this morning as messages of support pour in from all around the world. New Starbucks Plus Coffee is the coffee you love.